Okay, so hopefully that quiz went well. Um, at this time, go ahead and open up your notes. We're going to pick up where we left off. So the last little bit of notes should have been about strike slip. Um, if we need to touch back on that, I will do that um, in the next class. But for right now, let's get into folds and foliations. Last night you guys should have read about folds. Hopefully in the quiz you saw the syncline. Um, that was the image with the ball shape. Um, and then we've already talked about anticline and monocline. So hopefully we can move pretty quickly through this. So first type of fold that is up is an anticline. The layers are ascending or arching. And you notice there that there's a little bit of uh, detail there in that picture. It's talking about the axial plane, the hinge, and the limbs. So I'm going to give you guys a minute just to write down the notes and then we will get back to this. Good, so it shouldn't take you too long. And again, this is a review. We talked about this on Monday. So anticline, highlight the anti, and then highlight arch, like shape. Um, if you look at the picture over here, and I'm gonna just highlight for a second, right? We have, oh, that is a terrible color, sorry. Um, you have hinge, axial plane, and limb. All along the sides here, these are our limbs of a fold. The axial plane is the line that you would run down the center if you played connect a, a line connecting, if you look over at this picture, going down the center of where that fold is, that's gonna be your axial plane. And then the hinge is just the turning point, just like the hinge on a door is the turning point. Next, you have a syncline. Again, this was what hopefully you got right on the quiz. Again, it's noting the hinge, the axial plane, and the limbs over here. So the syncline is going to be a trough shape or a bowl shape. I know it says syncline. If you look at it in the, in the breakdown over here, right? sync like your your phone syncs to bluetooth um i think sync because i'm a little bit older like where i turn the faucets and wash my hands so if you guys think like a sink with a faucet well then trough shape should make sense and you guys can tie the rest together I think that should be enough time. This video, by the way, will be on the website over the weekend if you need to go back and, and pick up some notes. Um, so monocline, very simple. A simple bend or dip in a rock. Basically, it's one little bend. So the compressional stress comes in, just pushes a little, and causes one part to either push up or downward ever so slightly.
All right, cool. Now that we've gotten past the basic idea that all folds are going to be the result of compressional stress, whether an anticline, a syncline, or a monocline, I'm going to twist it a little. Right over in here, if you think of this side pushing this way and this side pushing that way, what type of stress is that? Hmm. Some of you might, I'm not sure if he wants us to answer. Um, in your head, I'm hoping that you're saying to yourself, wow, that actually looks like shear stress. So compressional stress, two things coming at one another. If we start to bend the layer, well then that means that part of it has started to push past. So compressional stress kind of leads into a shearing stress in this example of a monocline. And then what if the fold is three dimensional? Rather than just thinking about like folding a piece of paper, what if we were to, to fold a whole area? So you're moving out in all directions. Well, that's where a dome and a basin are gonna form. So think of a dome, I don't know, where, where they, the Cowboys play their, their, their games. Um, right, you're, you're bulging up in the middle. If you're not a, a sports fan, think about your cereal bowl. Flip it upside down, that's a dome. Flip it the other way to pour your cereal in, that's a basin. So we're seeing the, the basin over here and we're seeing the dome effect over here. Right? I'm not very good at the whole art thing, but you guys get the idea. Sorry, I should probably erase that. Can't copy down the words. Give you another few seconds to, to finish up those notes. To the person covering the class, if they need more time, please feel free to just hit pause. And I do appreciate your help today. So why do folds form? Why? Why do we have to learn about this? Well, first off, the whole eastern seaboard, and more importantly, New York, which is on the eastern seaboard. If you just learned that today, uh, well, congratulations. But the whole New York complex is a whole bunch of folded rocks. We said that there were four orogenies, the Grenvillian, the Taconic, the Acadian, and the Alleghenian orogenies all times when continental crust smashed into continental crust and formed the U.S. the way that we see it on the eastern seaboard. The west coast is a little different, and we'll talk about that another time. But this compressional stress, the idea of smashing two land masses together, caused a lot of folding. And as you guys prepare for the holidays, many people will travel next week. Um, if you're going off the island and you're going on the, the park, on the, well, the parkways, but... Um, the interstates, you're going to see these large outcrops on the sides of the roads. It's very rare to find any that are horizontal. Most of them are either tilted or 
full on folded. So keep your eye out as you're, you're traveling. Some of y'all will probably go upstate to do some skiing, maybe up into Vermont. These rocks are everywhere, everywhere in the Northeast. So why did they fold? Well, there was a compression. As we just said, the continental crust smashing into the continental crust, this is a compressional stress. At times we had shear stress. So as I showed you before, if you have a thrust fold, right, or that, that type of compressive stress that would cause that type of thrust fold, um, you can actually get the, the forces. So shear stress can actually push over one another. Um, this next note on here where it says, when rock layers move up and over step like bends, it's a little confusing. Um, I'll, I'll try to explain it this way. Um, if I have my fault, right, my thrust fault would look like this. Once this area over here, and I'm going to try and highlight it, once this area over here oversteps that, it can actually bend down and adapt to the land. It's not, especially if we're talking about high temperature, high pressure situation, that layer may actually adjust to the landform. And then when faults, when you, when you have slip, um, again, you can get the, this folding, this adjustment. So these words might seem a little confusing. The pictures in the next slide I think will help. Obviously my drawings aren't the best. So look at these pictures, right? Initially, when we're when we're up we're up in this area. Oh, I have no idea what I just did. Hold on. All right, problem solved. Sorry about that. Um, so over here, right? You're just seeing the straight up compressional stress pushed together, pushed together, and this is making the anticline and the syncline. Another anticline. This is straight up ductile deformation, compressional stress, too easy. Down underneath, this is where we're seeing the shear stress come in. So this right here is your shear stress and you're seeing how you can actually get some pretty intricate folding. Then in the top right, you're seeing the thrust fault pushing over and then that adjustment that I was trying to sketch for you. So that right there is that adjustment. Good? I think that, that should sum it up. Let's go to the next one. All right, so foliation. We learned about nice, and nice is banded. And we said, oh, wow, it's really nice that they're parallel layers. But in reality, after that, that nice separation, you can actually now bend these foliations. And it, it's pretty incredible when you see it in, in first hand. But imagine a mass, like the size of Kellenberg of, of rock, right? You're standing outside, the whole side of the building is one mass of folded gneiss. So you see all of this banding going back and forth, back and forth. But instead, and I apologize for this, it looks all kinds of crazy and wonky all over the place. 
Now that you got that image, why don't you guys try and take these notes? And we're just about done for today. So we're going to stop there for today. Um, we will pick up on Monday with 7.5. A couple quick reminders tonight. 85 or below is doing test corrections. Everyone, everyone owes me a, a parent signature on the test I gave back yesterday. Um, this weekend, everybody else, take a look at the practice test that I put together for you. Um, start preparing for the test that is on Wednesday. All right. I hope you all have a great weekend. Make sure you go to mass and try and do something nice for somebody else. You know, maybe think about the queen of peace, um, giving that we're doing next week, um, or find somebody else to do something nice for. Have a great weekend guys.